Good morning. Good morning, Tom and Peggy. Looks good to see you. I see that Vicki's coming on and Christina is on and Anne is on. Hallelujah, looking good. And look at all the folks in the congregation too. What a wonderful. Carolyn's here. I'm glad to see you. Anyway, so we're going to begin because I think it's time. Yep, 10.01. So let's begin our worship with um, announcements. Like to welcome everyone to worship this morning. Uh, I think we need the the TV muted. Does anyone know how to do that? Okay. Um, is Bev here today? I don't see her. We're gonna, we need to sing to her sometime. It was her birthday a few days ago. Epiphany has begun, and it's um, always quite a experience to read through the epiphany text because in them we are revealed to us who jesus is this christ child is last sunday we talk about jesus baptism today reading is the second half and a different gospel about the narrative of jesus baptism you see right after jesus baptism he begins the mission of calling his disciples um, he used the words of invitation come and see. And I think as we begin to look forward through this year, we should use that come and see as sort of a evangelism phrase. Our worship leaders today are assisting minister Sandra, reader is Brick, I will be presiding, communion team, I do the bread and Sandra's doing the wine and um, Vern is going to be doing the tray. I have announcement to make, but first I'm going to ask, does anyone else have some announcements for today? Yes, I bet you're going to be the one I was going to do. <laughs> you need to come up here, okay? Yeah, February, right? First Sunday in February. Okay. Yep, we have lots of time to make that announcement. That's good. So it's on the first Sunday in February. And that's because of a sad reason. Um, one of our, many of our dear friends, uh, Margaret Stevens, has died. She died yesterday morning. And uh, so plans for her memorial service are probably on right now, January 28th at about two o'clock. So 
you'll be notified more of that information as things progress. But it's, it's for me, this is very heartbreaking. She was a good friend and she's been a good friend to others of you in this congregation. In fact, she is a member. And so we will be holding her memorial service. Any other notes and thoughts? Yeah, go right ahead. Go ahead. Can men sign up? Thank you. We'll continue now with our worship, a prelude by Jerry.
That was just beautiful. Thank you. We'll continue now with the greeting and peace. Please stand. The peace of Christ the King be with you always. Our gathering hymn is Rise, Shine, You People. We'll continue now with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another. For the glory of your holy name, <clears throat> amen. The former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Christ, uh, God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Our hymn of praise is, Word of God, come down to earth. Word of God, come down on earth.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, our strength and our redeemer, by your spirit, hold us forever. And through your grace, we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen. Please be seated, it's time for special music by Jerry and Dennis. Behold the Lamb, when following the Lamb of God, you should always start out with a prayer and end with praise. Lord, make us servants of your peace, where there is hate. May we so love where there is hurt. May we forgive where there is strife. May we make one where all is doubt. May we so fade where all is gloom. May we so hope. Where there is night, may we so light. Where all is tears, may we so joy. Jesus, our Lord, may we not see to be consoled, but to console nor to understanding hearts be drawn, but look for hearts to understand. May we not look for love's return, but see Selfishly, glory in our giving we receive, and in forgiving our forgiven, dying we live and are. Praise Him, praise Him, 
Beautiful. Thank you. We'll continue now with the readings, and Rick is rapidly coming forward to be our reader. Rapidly? Rapidly. I can't go that fast. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the verses 1 through 7. Here the servant, identified as Israel, speaks for herself and describes her honored mission. Called before her birth like Jeremiah and John the Baptist, the servant is not only to restore Israel, the servant's ultimate assignment is to bring news of God's victory to the ends of the earth. God's, God in faithfulness has chosen Israel for this task. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention. Your peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he held, hid me. He made me a polished arrow. But in the quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I, have, I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to be one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful to the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly uh, the psalm. It's Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. I waited patiently upon the Lord, who stooped to me and heard me cry. The, the Lord, Lord lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the miry day clay, and set my, my foot feet upon, upon a high cliff, cliff making my, my foot be sure. sure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy, Happy are they, they who trust in the Lord. They, they do not turn to enemies, enemies or to those who follow lies. Great are the wonders you have done. O Lord, my God, in your plans for us, none can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. Sacrifice, Sacrifice and offering, offering you do not desire. desire. You, you have opened, opened my ears, burnt, burnt offering, offering and sin offering, offering you, you have, have not required. required. And so I said, here I am. I come to the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your, your law is deep, deep within, within me. me. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O oh Lord, you know. I have, I have not, not hidden, hidden your righteousness, righteousness in my heart. I have, I have spoken not spoken of your faithfulness and your Richard deliverance. Jones. I have not concealed your steadfast love and truth from the great assembly. You, you are, are the Lord. Lord. Do, Do not withhold your, your compassion from me. me. May, May your, your steadfast, steadfast love and your truth continually keep me safe. safe. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 9. Through God's church in Corinth is a 
fractious congregation beset with many conflicts. Paul opens his letter by spotlighting the multiple ways God has enriched and sustained its life as part of the divine call into fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from Corinthians. Call, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Silmanthius to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Together, all these who are in every place, call in his name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Praise to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have been enriched by him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so you may be blameless on that day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be you. to God. We will continue with the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them coming, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying. And they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Many of you worry about the continued life of this congregation. Look at the low numbers, you can say. Look at how many people have left us. And so we worry, how will we manage in the future? If you only look at the numbers of membership or attendance, you may well think we are near death. But in my view, this family of flake glows with a rare thing, the life and vibrant spirit of God. So look again, just look again. You are keeping strong and faithful through service. Your kindness to one another is amazing and so is your welcome of strangers. Yes, praise God, Calvary Lutheran is alive. Both members in this facility, but also those of you on Zoom. But my great fear is that we forget this. 
and be persuaded that we're not. Yet we live, we really do live. We've been through a lot. We survived the pandemic when other congregations haven't, when they have combined or closed. We're financially stable, that is unheard of, while others are bankrupt. We've continued through the deaths of strong leaders, and we miss them, but we're alive. We are alive. Even if we were dying, but we aren't, we'd still have our purpose, our mission. We've got a job to do, to invite others to come and see Jesus. It's about Jesus' question that was asked of John's disciples and of us. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? This question could also be translated as, for whom are you seeking or needing? What are you longing and hoping for? In the book of John, the words of this question are the very one, very first ones. They're the very first ones that Jesus speaks. That makes them significant. And they're the theme of the entire book and maybe the whole of the Bible. What are you looking for? It's a good question. What are we looking for? Our culture forces that question on us every day. It tries to tell us just what we need, just what we seek, and then sells it to us. Our culture says we need an expensive car, whiter teeth, a new romance or whatever. It tells us that anything we desire can be bought for a price. But none of these things will ever truly satisfy. And you are blessed if you know this as truth. For we know where and with whom our needs are met. We know very well what true wealth and life comes only from God. Yet our culture continuously drums its message that we can buy what we want and what we need. And that message affects us to many of us and others. So you and I are called to counter this constant message with the good news of Jesus, who gives us relationships in a lonely world, in a family when ours breaks, who gives us hope when there, we really need hope, a true purpose in life. And most importantly, Jesus reveals Almighty God, who's with us right now, giving us life now in all ways and who sent his son to live, die, and rise again for us. In truth, others may not be able to name what they're looking for, but deep down, they too seek God. All people do. In today's reading, when Jesus asked the soon-to-be disciples what they're looking for, they rephrased the question by asking where he's staying. What those people really wanted to know was, how could they be with Jesus? not knowing that he was already with them. So the Lord invited them to come and see. And maybe we should also say that, those little words, come and see, to those who seek our Lord Jesus Christ, for it's an invitation we can give and should give. It's evangelism. That's evangelism. Just say, come and see. We could do it. Evangelism is not our strong suit here. And this is the sinful the simple message we're supposed to give. Come and see Jesus. Where all people need more than our culture's empty offers. Dr. David Lose has said that the decline of the Lutheran church will stop on the day when a critical mass, when enough of our people know that why they value their participation in church and how they can share it with others. We're close to that point right now. Yet unfortunately, some of us think our congregation is failing, not rising. Certainly some have left us. Few have left over the politics within the synod and greater church. Others have moved and sadly others have died. Some have just given up. But not you, not you. You have remained. You come. Those in this place and those of you on Zoom, you're here. You're the remnant. With Jesus and the love we share, you've been given what you need. 
And so you remain and you come together to praise God, to give him thanks. For through our Lord, you have been enwrapped by God's love. You've been blessed with forgiveness and abundant life, regardless of the brokenness of the world. And others seek this. And you and I as a family of faith are called to invite them to come and see the one who can satisfy their deepest of needs. For we're the faithful remnant. Faithful remnant. And God calls us to do that. That's our job. That's our purpose. Sadly, we don't always fulfill our purpose. And as a family of, they, of, of faith, because of that, we may not last much longer. That's why we may not last. Not because we're small in number. It's like Dorothy keeps saying, we're small and mighty, and we are. We have the finances. We're not broke. We will not fade away because of those things, but because we've forgotten our purpose, because we get so involved in trying to survive. We've done that. Now we reach out. Be clear, our purpose as a family of faith isn't to get more people in this building. It would be nice. I mean, it'd be more fun. We'd have a lot. We have fun with the few we have. You know, it'd even be more fun if we had more numbers. We don't need to get them into this building or on Zoom or stop the decline of our denomination. Our purpose, and it's a noble one, our purpose is to invite others into the joy and the life that we have found through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to make God's love known to them. And there is things you can be grateful for, because thank God we're not the only one doing this inviting. So if we fail to do our job, and that could happen, we're tired, right? And yet, thank God our Lord Jesus Christ continues to give you and me anyway that abundant life so much richer than anything we can buy. For Jesus remains with us. He's still there full of grace and life, still providing what we need most deeply, still inviting us to come and see, still determined to give us more than we can possibly imagine. So hear the good news. I always need to hear this good news. So I'm going to say it. I say it every time. So hear the good news. God through Jesus is always with you and me. And nothing, not anyway, not even ourselves can change that. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand and let us sing our next hymn, Lamb of God. Your only son brings him to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty sword and to become the Lamb of God. O oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in your precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of your gift of love we crucified, we laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king we named a fraud, and the sacrifice the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the so lost I should have died but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and through me called a lamb of God O Lamb of God sweet Lamb of God I love the Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God.
congregations around the world, we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries, merciful God. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters. Protect them from pollution. Support plants and animals who depend on them. And bring rain in places of drought. Guys in the protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. Merciful God, receive, receive your prayer. prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you even when it feels like a sharp sword or polished arrow. Give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God. Here. There are so many in our community in our community and our congregation that are have passed or have serious illnesses. We like to think of the the grieving, the loss of their family or friends. There are several to think about. They're listed here. We want to remember our rest of our congregation, our prayers on our prayers concerns list, and members and friends of Calvary, Brian Stevens, Kay and Kay, Ken and Kay Stoddard, Carolyn Taberner, Deborah Taylor, Michael Tremblay, Canton, Marsha Willis, Jeff, Susie, Dale, and Lee Wingett. Members and friends serving in the military, Carrie Egan, U.S. Army. And also our partners in ministry, Christ Lutheran Church, our Savior's Emmanuel Lutheran, Lutheran Church of Arcata, Grace Good Shepherd, Reverend Claire S. Burkett, Interim Bishop, Sierra Pacific Synod, and ELCA Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. In every place and time you have sanctified your people, we praise you for the testimony of those who have died in their fight. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. 
Amen. Please be seated at time for special music by Jerry. Thank you. I love that tune. Wonderful. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. We give thanks for all your works of merciful power and ask you to shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We magnify and adore you through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for Holy Communion, those of you who are using individual elements, if you gather them, including you on Zoom, if you do the same, um, let us stand for the thanks. Why don't we stand? Thanks for uh, Thanksgiving at the table. Want to stand? Together, we make the sign of the cross as these words are said. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for the darkness in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me, bread of Christ broken for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is in the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A blessing for those who have just communed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. An invitation to you who are about to commune. The table is set and all are welcome. We come to taste the joy of God. Amen. You're all invited to the table. I took this for you. I'll give this to you too. I can't seem to find my stuff. What peace of love is offered here? What banquet come from heaven? What
We do have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but we're, but we're serious. It's full of joy in this place. Yeah. Let us pray. Lord, it is good for us to be here, for we have tasted your glory in this holy meal. Continue your goodness as we go out from here. Open our eyes to see your face shining in every person and send us to be your servants in every place. You are the life and the light of all, both now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is Arise, Your Light Has Come. Please stand as we sing. Arise, your light has come. The Spirit will obey. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Arise, your light has come. Bring light up risen Lord. Proclaim the captives liberty. Good tidings to Arise, your light has come, all you in sorrow born. Bind up the broken hearted ones and comfort those who mourn. Arise, your light has come. While mountains burst in the song, rise up like eagles on the wing. God's power will make us strong. Thank you. Before we do the blessing, I think we ought to give a round of applause to these people. Gary is playing. One, uh, one hand, one and a half handed and a foot because he's broken his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> and Jerry has done the humbling task of taking over Gary's um, special music and she's doing such an outstanding job. Please give them a round of appreciation. I think they're marvelous. <laughs> Just amazing. Just amazing. So the blessing. God the Father, light creator, God the Son, light from light, and God the Holy Spirit, light revealer, bless you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sit and listen to Jerry's postlude.
<laughs> Wonderful. Looks like Elvis. Okay, Zoomers, you know the rules. It's that time. <laughs> They've done it. Go in peace. Make God's love known. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What a wonderful service. And thank yeah. you all. Our I mean, one announcement. Okay. Um, Hi. Hi. No, you don't take the. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat the paper. <laughs> we'll eat the paper. <laughs> oh, girl. My pink dog is over here next time, so we have another white dog. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. Pearl. Missed that. <laughs> Thank you. Good news. Anyway, a lot of sadness right now. So hold one another in prayer and care. But it's good that you all came today. And God bless you all. Have a great week. You know, I prayed for rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was a little overdone right? <laughs> anyway we, we don't have a drought so thank god for that and so <laughs> go in peace serve the lord thanks be to god god <laughs> Bye, everyone. you guys beautiful service